Taxi Driver is one of the key works of the 1970s. It was made on a small budget as a labour of love for its director Martin Scorsese and its screenwriter Paul Schrader. But it became a surprise commercial success and an endless source of controversy. At Cannes in 1976, Taxi Driver was awarded the main prize, the Palma d'Or, by a jury presided over by Tennessee Williams. Astonishingly, for a writer whose plays feature rape, cannibalism and castration, Williams made public his doubts about the movie's presentation of violence. Five years later, in 1981, John Hinckley, a young man obsessed with Jodie Foster, attempted to assassinate President Reagan and claimed that he'd been influenced by Taxi Driver. Only now, 20 years after it was made, is the movie which secured Martin Scorsese's worldwide reputation getting its first screening on British television. Taxi Driver is very much a product of its time. The restrictive Hollywood production code had been abandoned in 1968 and filmmakers had gained unprecedented freedom. A new generation of writers and directors were taking over American cinema, most of them film school graduates born in the 1940s, reared on television and influenced as much by personal European films as by the old Hollywood. The leaders of this American new wave were Steven Spielberg, Francis Coppola, Brian De Palma and, of course, Martin Scorsese. In 1975, the year Taxi Drive was being made, national morale was at its lowest ebb. The Watergate scandal and the resignation of President Nixon, defeat in Vietnam and a humiliating retreat from Saigon, fear and despair in the inner cities, this was the condition of the United States as its bewildered citizens prepared to celebrate the bicentenary of 1976. Yet, though the flared trousers and the long hair date the movie, it remains fresh and vital. The language and climactic violence are clearly less shocking than they were in 1976, but the film's real power to disturb is undiminished. It resides in the way Scorsese takes us into the mind of Travis Bickle, the disturbed Vietnam veteran who can't sleep and is disgusted by the physical and moral squalor of New York. Virtually, the whole of the picture is seen through the eyes of this paranoid loner, a man far removed from your traditional chatty Manhattan cabbie. But Scorsese and Schrader don't view him as evil or as a monster. Both come from deeply religious backgrounds. Schrader was raised in a strict Dutch Calvinist family in Michigan, Scorsese as a devout Italian-American Catholic in New York, and they see the confused, contradictory Travis as a corrupted saint an avenging angel, a man who wants to do good and to make his mark. They also see him as shaped by his culture, an expression of modern city life. And they recognize something of themselves, something of all of us in him. Robert De Niro, in the second of his seven pictures with Scorsese, brings his characteristic intensity, inwardness, and sense of danger to Travis. And special mention must also be made of the contribution by a member of an older generation, Bernard Herrmann had gone to Hollywood with Orson Welles in 1940 and had composed the innovative score for Citizen Kane. And he was persuaded by Scorsese to write the haunting, edgy music for Taxi Driver. Herrmann completed his work the day he died, Christmas Eve, 1975. And the movie is dedicated to his memory. <laughs>